Welcome to the third episode in a Legendarium series about the reputed founders of the First English Kingdoms. Today we'll be talking about Isel of Mercia. We'll be talking about the man in the legend himself, his religion which was centered around the Germanic forest god Woden. We'll be talking about Mercia after Isel, King Penda the Pagan, and how Christianity finally triumphed in a kingdom founded by pagans. The Germanic invasion of England did not come in one great movement of people, like the Norman invasion of 1066. It was small and piecemeal, a few keelboats of migrants at a time, who carved out small kingdoms along the coast of post-Roman Britain. And it wasn't just warriors. Now, if only men came, that meant just a few raiders coming to smash open the barns, grab a few chickens and goats, then return to their boats. However, if the invaders came with women and children, that meant they would stay, taking the land of the Romano-Britons and sometimes their heads. One such invasion came in the year 515, over a century after the legions left and more than a generation after the fall of Rome. It was likely a group of Angles led by a semi-legendary king named Isel. Like the other Germanic invaders, they were probably forced to leave their Danish homeland as the continental shelf shifted, turning fertile coastlands into salt marshes and swamps. According to legend, Isel was the descendant of Eomer, a warrior who appears in the epic poem Beowulf as a spear-bold warrior who served King Ofa. Indeed, Beowulf, the first recorded English-language poem, likely came in the memory of these new arrivals. It served as a reminder of the homeland they were forced to leave even centuries after the fact. Upon arriving in the eastern coast of Britain, Isel battled the Romano-Britons, defeating them and carving out a small kingdom for himself and his subjects. By 527, he had taken over most of East Anglia, and by the time of his death in 535, Isel made himself king of both East Anglia and part of what would become Mercia. Now, during his reign, Isel created a royal seat called Tamworth, which would become the capital of Mercia. And though the kings tended to travel the countryside, keeping an eye on rebellious vassals and chasing off invaders, they always returned to Tamworth during the winter solstice and later Christmas. However, Isel brought more than just his men and the poem Beowulf. He also brought the worship of the Germanic forest god Woden. Likely similar to the Odin worshipped by the Vikings, Woden was said to have killed a giant named Ymir, then fashioned the earth and sky from the titan's dead body. And because he had some time left over, Woden also created the first man and woman from an ash tree. Sounds like a very handy fellow. Though most of Isel's subjects would have been Christians, the god of their king and his legbreakers found his way into a medieval tale that even the most devout Christian took seriously. Throughout medieval Britain, and even some parts of Europe, people lived in terror of packs of ghostly hounds who raced through the forests in midwinter, believed to be a time when the worlds of the living and the dead met. The hounds were joined by phantom huntsmen led by Woden himself. And if people heard the clanging of chains and bells made by Woden's wild hunt, they flung themselves onto the ground to avoid seeing them. For anyone who gazed upon Woden might be carried off and dropped miles from where he was taken. On their route, the wild hunt was said to break into houses, stealing food and drink. Magicians were believed to use witchery to have their souls join the hunt while their bodies remained at home. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle even kept a description of the wild hunt. It was seen and heard by many men. The hunters wore black and were great and loathy, and their hounds all black and wide-eyed, and the men rode on black horses and black he-goats. The monks heard the horns blowing through the night. Truthful men who kept watch said that it sounded as if there might be about 20 or 30 horn blowers. This was heard all through Lenten tide until Easter. Sounds like nobody got much sleep that you winter. Now, it sounds thrilling, but unfortunately we know more about Woden's wild hunt than we do about Isel's successors. The Viking invasions of the 800s and 900s swept away so many records and archaeological pieces that we know only a few bits and pieces of the Icelingus dynasty from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Isel's son Nebba ruled for about 10 years, from 535 to 545, and almost nothing is known about his grandson Cinewald, not even how long he ruled. Creota, said to have ruled from 580 to 595, had to give up East Anglia to a new Germanic invader, King Wuffa the Angle, who would become the first king of East Anglia. However, this move allowed Creota to focus on defending Mercia, which was further inland and had no coast to protect. 
This gambit must have worked because Creota was able to pass the crown to his son Pibba, described in the Chronicle as a busy king who sired 12 sons. However, Mercia's fortunes changed with the rise of King Panda, a battle-hungry monarch who restored Mercia's glory. Under his axes and rods leadership, Mercia went on the offensive. First, he crushed King Cyniglus of Wessex at the Battle of Chirinchester in 628, taking both the Severn Valley and the province of Huis from Wessex. Then, King Penda allied with King Cadwallon of Wales against King Edwin of Northumbria. Together, the Welsh and the Mercians destroyed the Northumbrian army at the Battle of Hatfield Chase in 633. Edwin and his son were killed, and the kingdom of Northumbria collapsed like a bad film franchise. It's worth noting that among the kings of England, Penda at the time was one of the few to remain devoutly pagan. Most of England's Germanic kings were at least calling themselves Christian, perhaps in part to make themselves more acceptable to their Romano-Britain subjects. However, Penda stuck firmly with Woden. Indeed, around this time, his kingdom was visited by a man named Sigbert, a former king of East Anglia who was such a devout Christian that he left his crown and throne behind to become a monk and missionary. According to tales at the time, Sigbert began setting up monasteries in Mercia and preaching the Gospels to anyone who would listen. None too pleased, King Penda marched out with his retinue and murdered Sigbert himself, along with his followers. Later, Sigbert would be venerated as a martyr. Not one to rest on his laurels, Penda the Pagan fought Christian Northumbria again when it reunited under King Oswald. While Penda was a fierce pagan devoted to Woden, King Oswald of Northumbria was a devout Christian who built a wooden cross before the battle and prayed before it. Sadly, that run of bad luck kept going for the Northumbrians as Penda King killed killed King Oswald at the Battle of Masterfield, supposedly as Oswald prayed for the souls of his dying men. According to the Christian writers of the time, the soil where Oswald died gained miraculous healing properties. The Venerable Bede, our main source of history from this time, was truly horrified at Penda's victories. Why? Two reasons. First, Bede was a Northumbrian, which does a lot to explain his feelings. And Bede was also a devout Christian, while King Penda was a devotee of Woden, the pagan god of his ancestor Isel. When Penda won these victories, he wasn't just expanding mercy and power. He seemed to be showing that his heathen god Woden was stronger than the Christian god. England wasn't just a battleground between Britons and Germans and kings and other kings, but Christians and pagans. According to tale-tellers of the time, Penda even tied the head, forearms, and hands of King Oswald to wooden stakes in something like a sacrifice of kings to his god Woden. It recalled his ancestor Isel's practice of hanging strips of flesh torn from the bodies of human sacrifices to in the tree branches as offerings to Woden. However, according to Christian writers of the time, Penda's offering was thwarted. Oswald's right arm was carried off by a bird, dropped near a tree, and a spring formed with both the pool and the tree gaining healing powers that cured the sick. Despite this miracle, by 650 AD, Penda of Mercia looked as if he could dominate England. Not only had he snatched lots of Wessex and Northumbria from the previous owners, but he had a strong alliance with the Welsh. It could take a miracle to stop Penda the Pagan, and then that miracle happened. In 655, Penda was challenged by Oswald's brother Oswy, who still held the northern region of Northumbria. Penda must have chuckled to himself, wondering if the Northumbrians really enjoyed getting kicked in the teeth. He marched on Oswy in November, but was defeated and killed at the Battle of Winwade. The Northumbrian victory resulted in the Christianization of Mercia, since it seemed clear that the Christian god of Oswy was stronger than Penda's Woden. Penda's son and successor Piata converted to Christianity before he took the throne. All of his men decided that becoming a Christian was a great idea after all, and were immediately baptized. Every Mercian king after Piata would become a Christian. Though Mercia would rise to even greater glory under King Offa, whose dyke you may have heard of, the paganism that Isel brought to England was all but finished. And that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, please let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great day.